Welcome back friends, Dan Vega here back with another tutorial and today we're going to look at creating single file components in view 3. That's right and we'll do it right after this. Hello friends, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to have a little bit of fun with view 3 and single file components. So the Vue source code for Vue 3 has been out for a little while now, but it recently just hit alpha, which brought some new exciting things to do. So here we are in the Vue Next um, repository, which is Vue 3. So you can always download the source code, do a build, um, do a release, and actually get a release uh, bundle that you can use. Um, but it's been pretty limited on what you can do with it. The single file component compiler just got wrapped up a little bit ago and we're starting to see some more projects get updated and really what this allows us to do is instead of just playing in the uh, source code with the release we can actually start to build some applications locally and play around with a lot of new features in Vue 3. Uh, so I'm excited about this. We're going to jump in. I'm going to show you a couple of things. So here we are on the Vue 3, which is Vue Next, uh, GitHub repository. You'll see that the there is a simple Webpack-based setup with single file component support here, which is this Vue Next Webpack preview. So if you download this, uh, you'll look at the package.json. It's using Vue3.0.alpha. And if you look in the source, there'll just be a main.js and an app.view. What this does, though, is allows you a simple project to start creating single file components in and play around. Uh, but more importantly, I want to show you about another thing that just came out and that really helps us create uh, components in Vue 3. So if we look at this, which is the Vue CLI plugin for Vue Next. And what this is, is a plugin to try out Vue 3 Alpha. Now, as it states here in the README file, this is just for preview purposes only. Um, there's probably, you don't want to sit here and build a new project and pump this out into production uh, because you're going to run into some issues. But what this does do is allow us to create a new project using the CLI and add this plugin in and then start creating single file components using Vue 3's source code, which again, now we can start playing around with the composition API in components. So that's what we're gonna do today. Here I am in a directory. I'm just gonna create a new project. We're gonna say, hello, Vue 3, single file components. And this is just using, um, I think I'm on 4. something as far as the Vue CLI goes. This is just creating a Vue 2 project at the moment. So we're just saying, all right, go ahead and use the default uh, Babel and ESLint. Let's go ahead and create that. And once this is done, what we're going to do is we're going to run that plugin. Uh, we're going to add that plugin to this project. And it will change a few things for us and add Vue 3 Alpha into our project. And so let's take a look at what it does when we go ahead and add that. Okay, so I'm going to cd into that directory, hello view 3 uh, single file components, and I'm just going to say view add view next. And what this does is actually going to create uh, change a few files. One uh, is going to be the package.json. It's going to update the uh, version to uh, alpha uh, 3.0. And we're going to look at the source main.js because something has changed there as well. So I'm just going to open in this in Visual Studio Code. And we'll start by looking at the package.json. So if we look at this, we can see views dependency is on 3.0.0 alpha 1. We can also see the single file, compi single file component compiler is on 3.0. And that is really what we need to get started. The other change that was made was to main.js because uh, Vue 3.0 was rewritten completely from scratch in TypeScript and it, they ended up creating a much more uh, maintainable code base but also more modular. And with that modularity came a new global API. 
Uh, if you're interested in hearing more about that, let me know below and I'll create a video around that as well. But with that, um, we can't create a new instance uh, the way that we did before. And this create app method is really our starting point. This method allows us to create an app instance and then do things with it, like um, maybe add some mixins or add a directive, uh, or in this case, mount the app uh, component to our uh, div ID of app. So this should look pretty familiar uh, once we get past this. We're into a component, so we have app.view, and then we have a hello world component. So I'm actually gonna delete that hello world component. I'm gonna delete everything that's in here and I'm going to change this to counter. I'm gonna remove this and give us just a nice fresh starting point. And I'm gonna say counter. Okay, now what we're gonna do is go into components. We're gonna say new file and we're going to say counter.view. Now I'm sorry, you probably, if you've been messing around with Vue 3, you've probably seen this example uh, a lot, and it's probably getting old at this point, but my intentions are to just kind of show you that you can create these components within Vue 3 in the new, or in the CLI using this plugin. We're going to jump into some more advanced examples uh, in following videos. So we're going to create a new Vue component here, and we're going to create a template. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a button that basically has a count variable. So we're gonna pull that from somewhere. So state.count, and I'll talk more about this in a second. And we're gonna use double, and we're gonna pull this from state.double. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and instead of creating a component using the options API, I'm going to create one using the composition API. And so the composition API starts with a method called setup. So we're gonna start with setup, and then what we need to do is we need to create some reactive data. In the options API, we would do this in the data function. Here we're just going to, we need to create that reactive data using a new uh, method from the API called reactive. And so I'm gonna set up a variable called state, and I'm gonna start typing reactive, and as I hit enter, you're gonna see that it's now importing reactive from Vue. So it's nice that I'm kind of getting that help. I don't have to go up and manually type that. So this is a method and we're just gonna create some state in here. So I'm gonna create a variable called count that is initialized to zero. I'm gonna create a variable called double, which is actually going to be a computed property. So we're gonna take computed. As I start typing that out, we see we get some IntelliSense here. Uh, so computed is a function, uh, add computed to existing import. Yes, I want that. So as you can see, it's now added computed to our import. So computed is gonna take a function and all we're gonna do is take count and multiply that by two. So that's good there. So we also wanna create a function. So when we click on the button, it goes ahead and increments count. So we're gonna say function increment and what that's going to do is just take our state.count and increment that. Finally, anything that I want available in my template, I need to return from the setup function. So I'm gonna say return, I'm going to return state and increment. Okay, so everything looks good. Last little bit here is when we click on the button, just like we normally would in view two, we need to add a click handler, right? So we're gonna say at click, I want you to go ahead and increment. Okay, so everything looks good here. I'm gonna go back down to terminal here and I'm gonna type npm run serve. And if everything goes well, we have started up on localhost 8080. So I'm gonna say localhost 8080. And here we have our button. So as I click on it, uh, count is getting incremented by one and the computed property uh, double is basically taking whatever that count is and multiplying it by two. So as I keep clicking on it, you can see this kind of in action. So that's really all I wanted to show. I just wanted to show you that it was um, really easy to get up and running with Vue 3 in a local dev environment now to start playing around with some of the new features. 
I recently gave a talk at CodeMash on a lot of the new features that I'm excited about in Vue 3. So my plan is to kind of start showing a lot of these off to you and go into some more uh, advanced demos. So if there's anything that you're really interested in seeing, I'd love to hear from you. Please uh, leave a comment below. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to start creating demos that I think are interesting. Uh, probably most within the Composition API, kind of showing that off and I think just trying to show some demos of why you actually want to use the Composition API because it's not always in this case for this counter you wouldn't use it unless you just really like this style. Um, but I do want to show off the reasons for it because I know when I first saw it I was like, eh, why are we why are we adding functionality here? Uh, what is this actually doing for us? And once you started to get in and start playing with it, it it really makes a lot of sense and it's a it's a really great API. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please leave me a comment below if you if you like this, uh, what you want to see next. Uh, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and as always, friends, happy coding.